Look who's come round, Stacey with the kids. She's coming to have dinner, they're having a barbecue because it's Sunday and what is it? What is barbecue you? day. <laughs> barbecue Fun day. day, family day. See you in a minute. <laughs> Right, here we go then, well, as I say, we've got, we've got the kids around and Stacey and Gary and Sharon's inside cooking a Sunday dinner. So, lucky enough, we had some spare stuff in the freezer, so we've dug it out anyway. So we're gonna give them a nice Sunday barbecue. Well, we're gonna let them do it themselves anyway. As Gary's working, we'll show you that lawnmower in a minute, because Gary's doing that one, that hater effect. What was it, hater what? The hater 48, which we looked at in the last video. And uh, you should have seen the state of the carburetor. We're gonna have a look at it in a minute, but anyway, so Stacey's going to be looking after the barbecue, are you? Oh, you're not? <laughs> Who's doing that then? So he's working. He's got the kids up there as well. Yeah. And you're going to be in there with your feet up. Yeah. That's how it works. Anyway, so I've got them out some uh, sausages, some burgers, and some, uh, what are these, spare ribs, aren't they? Yeah. So they're going to have a play about that, because Sharon's done our dinner. This is all of sort of on the fly sort of thing. We weren't, we didn't plan this. The weather's turned out nice. It was overcast this morning, so we've just come out here anyway. So I'll leave that to you, Stacey. <laughs> Right, what's happening up here, Bert? What's these two doing up here? What are these, apprentices or what? What are they? This is your lawnmower? Is it? What is about you, Harry? Have you... Harry's lawnmower's over there? Okay, well, never mind. Right, so what's happened here? What did you find when you took this off? This was the one that was running rough, by the way, people. So, you've taken the air filter off. Yeah, and this was full of all hay and straw and stuff like that. Yeah, look at that. All that sort of stuff was in there. Look, this is com com compressed. Hay, hay, hay from horses. Yeah, so that was, you couldn't actually see through that at all, could you? No. So that was totally clogged up, and that was the air filter, that's a lot of pre-filter, isn't it? Yeah. This is the main air filter, I mean, this has never been changed by the looks of it. And this was absolutely clogged up. What have you, what have you done with this, just give it a quick clean for the moment? Just give it a quick clean at the moment. Right, well he's gonna get another one of these anyway, but at least, when he took the spark plug out, this was totally, eh? Hey? It was black, wasn't it? Totally black and sooted up. I don't know if you can see that. But as you can see, so the problem was that this was running lumpy. Well, we found the reason why it was running lumpy. So uh, the other only problem he's got now after an engine service is to check the drivetrain on it because the handle was, was it the handle held up? No, it, it's, it's actually pulling when the handle ain't up. Oh, I see. So the drive's actually working, but it's not disengaging. So that may be adjustment or something like that. So we're going to leave Gary with that one for the moment. And I'll just show you in the log cabin what I've been up to. Not in the log cabin. Where have I been? Polytunnel. In the polytunnel because uh, I've been doing a bit of replanting this morning because the weather's been okay. Right, well, as you can probably see here now, I've actually thinned out some of them turnips. So these are the turnips. I don't know whether they're going to go go okay, but um, I did transplant, oh, one, two, three, four, five, 15, 20, about 25 there. And I've also planted, plant, planted. I've also planted, the, shut up, Stacey. <laughs> I've also planted the broccoli in here as well. So there's 20, broccoli stems in there so I'm hoping that they're going to take in here so that's the raised bed full now so I'll show you what else I've been doing in here this morning let's have a quick look you want to do those you want to water the potatoes go on in right let's pump that up again for you oh is Harry here as well what's he going to be doing I do that right pump that up there's no water in there now right now you've got to hold this you remember how to do it right okay you squirt that then Harry come over here Hey, you want to go with this? There's, only, there's no water in there. I'll tell you what, Evie. Evie, you let Harry have a go as well, will you? Right, okay, well, you carry on with that for a minute anyway. Right, well, these are the little carrots, as you know. Normally, you don't plant these. You plant these where they're going to be. So, um, I've actually transplanted some of these, and let's show you what I've done with them. Right, well as you can see, I've got, I've got 12 around the outside. I've gone around there with another seven and another two. So there's about 20 in each container. So I'm hoping they're gonna settle. And the way I've actually done this, so basically, let's say that was the earth. And all I've done, I've taken this thing, which is a long dibber, and I've pushed down, give it a twist. So I've got a nice deep hole. And I've tipped these out, got one of the single roots and the roots are actually quite long. I think I've got an old one here, look, where are we? Here's one here, look, this is only, this is only a small one, mind you, but. Uh, now as you can see, that's a tiny little thing. 
and that's what your stem and, and that's what actually turns into your carrot I think now last time when Sharon transplanted these last year when she put them in the raised bed all that sort of just gathered up the root just gathered up this time I can drop these in and keep the root uh, uh, straight and then just literally backfill like that and then that's how I've planted them so okay I'll at least transplanting carrots isn't an ideal situation but I've um, that's how I've done them in this occasion. Next time, it's only, and the reason why I've done it like that is because I don't really have the space to actually plow, row, plant rows and rows of carrots. So that's the way I've done it for this year. We'll see if it works. If not, then I have to think of something else for next year. Now, as you can see with this cucumber, what I've left in here, the stems on this now are a lot thicker than them little ones I've still planted out. So I think a lot of people have mentioned that, yes, I may have been over watering them and also the... Um, it's probably too cold for them, so I should probably bring them on for a little bit longer. So that's what I probably will do uh, if I have to plant any more. So I'll let them one stay in there for a little bit longer. And someone did suggest as well, planting them into three inch pots. Hold on, yes, do that one as well, darling, yeah. Plant them into three inch pots uh, instead of just planting them straight out from the little cells there. So I might even do that as well. Who's that talking in there? It's, it's all the people on YouTube. Say hello to him, wave to him. Say hello to mummy, mummy's in there. And daddy. And everyone on YouTube. You say hello to everyone in there, Harry. Give it a wave. Right, well, here we are, next day now. Primer's all hard and dried. And Jim is just gonna get ready to sand it back, so let's watch him do that. Don't forget, this is the green TI primer, the Lekla TI primer. And you do need a mask with this, as I say, because it's got a lot of uh, nasty chemicals in it. So anyway, that's what Jim is gonna do now. Now, as we've also uh, stated before, that there's many ways to do this job. We could get the DA out and uh, do it with the DA. We could wet sand it, but in this situation, we're just going to do a dry sand. And just to show you that there's more than one way to do the job. Right, there you go, it's all been sanded down with 500, all these scratches around the outside are 500 scratches. And uh, the panel is, let me show you. And as you can see, it is lovely and smooth, all the edges are feathered in. So what we'll do now, we'll, he's just gonna, what are you taking the wing mirror off? He's gonna take the wing mirror off, and that, what about that door trim? He's gonna mask that door trim up. What about the door handle? And mask the door handle up, which we could have taken it off, but just in this instance we're not going to bother too much but um, and then it'll scotch bright the whole uh, of the panel and uh, that's where we're at so let's leave it there for a minute until he's done that right so we're back out here at the hater and uh, what you found so far well, I've just took the drive belt cover off and it seems to be full of mud in there let's have a look in there yeah. I don't know if you can see in there that is absolutely chock-a-block with mud look at that look so this has obviously never really been maintained, this mower, so um, snails in there as well, look, everything's in there, look. So he's gonna have to dig all that out and clean all that out, but, um, so he just said the oil's black in it, and as you can probably see there, can you see that? Absolutely, although there's oil in it, it doesn't look like it's ever been changed, it's totally black, look. So, it's probably just never been maintained at all, this mower, so, anyway, once he's gonna service the engine, you're gonna paint this cover up, or? Is that covered up, this one? That's covered up with that. Oh, right, we've got the plastic cover on that one, look. Right, well, okay, well, let's let him get on with that then.
car again now. As you can see, there's loads going on today. We're doing loads of different things. Jimmy's uh, sanded it all down. He's back with 500. He's uh, gone over the whole of the, the door with a, 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 a grey Scots bright pad, Jimmy. Yeah. That's just to smooth all the lacquer out and to give the uh, new lacquer something to bite to. But uh, what we're going to do now, literally, is just put the base coat on. This is a water-based base coat. And uh, we're just going to apply it over the area there. So Jim has obviously masked up all the door where he don't need to, everything's ready to go. So he's just going to work on this area now and give a couple of coats of the water-based base coat, which we've mixed up. And we'll take it from there. So that's what we're, that's what we're going to do now. After we've had our tea. So again, we're spraying with the uh, SRI Deville Bis gun. We're spraying at tw uh, 28 pounds, which is two bar. And we've got a 0.8 tip in for this water-based paint. So that's what we're up to at the moment. And there we go, literally. So all we're gonna do now is flash that off quickly with the heat gun. Let me hold that for you. So we're, that's all you're gonna do. We're not gonna to go too mad at all because it's very easy to put too much paint on. So this is the old heat, old, the UV lamp. Not the UV lamp, the heat lamp we've got. And we'll just give it a quick five minutes under here and just flash that paint off. Now the, what you're looking for is the paint to go basically dull with this water-based paint and um, then it'll be ready for the next coat. So we're gonna just give this five minutes and we'll see you again in a second. Way past. Way past. One more coat off, that might do it. That's better. Right, well there we go. Oh, my bad knee. That's about four little thin coats of uh, the base coat there. And as we've gone along, he's sort of feathered it out a bit further and further. So we've um, taken in all the 500 scratches. So we've got good coverage there now. The colour don't look to be too bad, although it's very hard to tell at this stage because, as I say, this paint, when it dries, this water-based base coat, it dries matte. So it only comes to life once you put the lacquer on top of it. So. We're going to let this dry for about half an hour now and um, we'll come back to you a bit later on. See you in a minute. Right, would you credit it, it started to rain outside and my uh, porch leaks. So it's only just spitting, but I think we're going to be okay. So Jimmy's basically finished the base coat now. We, we've tack ragged it all off, it's all clean now. So we're just going to mix up the lacquer, which is a Max Mia lacquer we've got here, which is a 2K one. And uh, just give that a stir up. So all in all, it doesn't look too bad. So we're pretty pleased with the results so far. So we just mix this up. It's a, probably a little bit cool. It's about 17, 16, 17 degrees out here. So this is a this is a fast hardener. Hand for the juggler. This is a fast hardener in this. So again, we're going to try and get this done as quick as we can because the weather's unpredictable. Again, this is a different gun. Again, this is a it's still an SRI De Vilbis Pro, but this time it's got a one mil tip in it. We're still gonna be spraying at 2.8, uh, 28 pounds. We're happy with that. So let's get you, let's get going. that's the first coat on so we're just going to let that tack off and then we'll get back to you Thank 
there we go. That's the uh, damage repaired. The colour doesn't look too bad, although the rest of the car is dirty at the moment and it needs to be polished up obviously, but um, we will give it a cut back with the, um, the G3 compound and give it a buff up when it's finished. But um, So the thing to remember here is that we didn't spray the colour on the whole door. We literally just sprayed the colour around this part of the door and lacquered over the whole door. So at the end of the day, the colour match, although it's pretty dark out here, you can't really see, it looks pretty good at the end of the day. So um, you can see my reflection in it now. Okay, we're gonna need to flat it back. It's a little bit orange peely, but uh, obviously conditions ain't perfect in here. But uh, as I say, as far as the blend goes, the in-panel blend, that's turned out the best way. And as Jimmy said, if we would have taken the black, which we've mixed up right to the end of the door and painted the whole door in, there could have been a difference in the colour between this black and the old black and you would have basically probably seen that because it would have been such a hard edge but this way we've just blended the colour in and it's diffused over the whole door so yeah there we go hope you've enjoyed this little video so what you got to do to it now wait for it to dry I'll probably flat it tomorrow now 1500 quick skip and then buff it up again and give the car this high buff over as well. Yeah, because I mean all this dust and all that, that probably don't make it look good. But at the end of the day, the job is now done. It didn't take too long at the end of the day, so it's just a little job you can do yourself. Otherwise, you've got to take it to a garage and they're going to charge you a lot of money. Oh, the place I work. <laughs> Alright then, well, I'm going to leave that one here now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've had plenty of little things going on today. So Gary's still out there doing lawnmowers. I'm preparing my deck, as you know, you saw it a, a little bit earlier on. And in actual fact, it's quarter past five now. We've got to move all the cars back in and get all that sorted out. So uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Chill out. Bye for now.